Kia ora everybody. I wanted to have a chat to you about conspiracy theories and the people that we might know that have gone down the rabbit hole a little bit because I, I'm finding I'm coming into them more and more often lately and like I, I totally get that some people feel the need to latch on to these kind of weird thoughts and how they seem to be kind of self-sealing and that you know that everything you do leads back to them being right and, and that kind of thing. Um, and to be fair, conspiracy theories aren't something new. And I think I can prove that at the end of this video by pointing out a conspiracy theory that the majority of New Zealanders actually believe is true. So you can see that it's not just people who lack critical thinking skills who fall into it. But I wanted to go through, it's mostly me processing something at the moment. So I apologize if it feels like rambling, but I kind of wanted to look at, um, some of the really common themes that happen with the conspiracy believers that I've come across most recently. So as some of you are aware, I am a moderator on a community Facebook page for a small community coastal town where one of the reasons I took over for moderating this page is because there was an alternative page that was set up that was spreading deliberate misinformation and putting out the kind of bullshit that you get from uh, a whole bunch of grifters and racists, and I didn't think that was safe for the community. Over the last couple of days, that community struck back going, we're sick and tired of this. And I get to a community page with eight and a half thousand people, and we're talking maybe a dozen people who are all upset about this, but they want less COVID update information, and they want less conversations around um, the generalized things around COVID, like mask wearing and vaccinations and stuff like that. They tend to start horrifically intense debates where people spread misinformation and they cause a whole bunch of angst within the community and to be fair they're not related directly to the community so I get why the community is upset with that um, it's not something that I personally post if I'm posting something on the page to do with COVID it's things like this is the case numbers from within that community today and go talk to the doctor the doc it's actually what the doctors asked me to put up there uh, it was talk to the doctors they'll happily talk to anyone about vaccinations and um, that the effects of vaccinations and testing and stuff like that. It, it's never a push it in people's face kind of thing. And that's a very deliberate choice. Um, and, you know, as I said, kind of requested by the doctors as well. But this is, there are members in this community who are so ingrained with the misinformation that's out there at the moment around the virus that I'm, I'm finding it really fascinating personally. Like, like just sort of, it's like a rabbit hole of watching a train wreck happen, sort of, in that, from my perspective, everything I've seen and read and researched and heard from medical professionals that I know have all said the same thing. And this is very much the opposite of what these people and the research and science has said. And I find it absolutely brilliant. But at the same time, there's other factors that come into play that surprise me as well. And I think the biggest one of these is actually the fact that it doesn't matter who posts on this forum um, and the information that they're putting out. I'm the one who gets the blame for it from the people who are very much against the measures put in place to keep people safe and very much against the vaccine or mask wearing, social distancing, who think that it's just like a flu, who's, you know, the tropes by now. I don't need to go through them. Um, but it doesn't matter who posts stuff on the page that if they don't agree with it, it's me who's posted it in their eyes. And I'm, I'm finding that part really interesting for a couple of reasons. The first reason is because it feels like, because I, I agree with the government messaging around a lot of stuff. And don't get me wrong, I don't agree with the government 100% on everything that they've done. But when it comes to the health advice that they've got, I tend to agree with the big things um, that... I put a target on my back when I do that. Um, and one of the most common complaints I've had is you're working for Cindy. You've got to be working for Cindy. Like the Prime Minister's office is going to sit there and pay somebody to moderate a single community Facebook page and spread pro-vaccine information. That's a stretch for me to believe anyway. If it was true, where's my check? I'd really like to see that. Um, but it's something that these people genuinely seem to believe, that if you are pushing a pro-vaccine stance, you have to be working for the government to do it, because there's no other reason that you do it. And that, that completely belies the fact that like 90% of the country have their vaccines now. Uh, 
The second thing, and this is on me, and it probably comes down to my own confirmation bias, is that I have long held the opinion that standard schooling doesn't do much to teach critical thinking. It's basically a, look, here's what you need to learn, this is what you've got to do to pass the test, this is what you do to go on next. And there are still some parts of secondary education that don't do that as well. Um, and like, it's really hard to point out which one's which, because not everybody's going to go off and do a degree in philosophy for example where critical thinking becomes part of the course but it feels to me really obvious when I see it being presented to me from these particular individuals and I have to admit it's not just from that one community group this is a lot of people I know through social media and through other forums as well um, where they just don't seem to think critically and it confirms my bias that education needs to include an ability to critical think like you need to learn how that works so you can sit there and take this information from various sources and go right all of the media is saying this all of medicine is saying this you know all of the people who have had it are saying this but this one lawyer who's affiliated with the white power groups in wellington she says this other thing and not being able to put that together in a way that makes sense to everybody else that's where critical thinking really comes in to be able to disseminate information but it makes people feel special if they think or believe something else and it's one of the great things about conspiracy theories and how they work in that they are they're self-enclosed anything you do just feeds back into the conspiracy theory in fact this video probably feeds back into the conspiracy theory because all it's really doing is proving well if he's denying something about like working for Jacinda then he obviously works for Jacinda um, and if he's saying that you know we don't have critical thinking skills well critically I think he's saying that so I know that it's a self-serving loop so I do apologize for any of the conspiracy theorists, theorists out here who I have insulted. I actually don't mean to. Like, I genuinely don't mean to. It's Like I said before, I'm processing how to feel about this and acknowledging at the same time, I have my own bias on this whole conspiracy theory thing because I don't like the idea of people grifting others and that's how I see a lot of the New Zealand-based conspiracy theorists. Well, it's easy to sit down and ridicule people who have these belief structures uh, and I don't want to do that to be honest I feel really bad doing that and I feel really awful when I sit there and go well how come you can't critically think it makes me feel like an elitist prick when I do that um, it does still make you wonder just how easy it is to fall into a conspiracy theory loop as it were and so I wanted to give you an example of this a very Kiwi example of this which I was genuinely surprised to find I actually kind of believe on some level. So if we cast our minds back to 1995, I was a fresh-faced 15-year-old. I don't have photos. I'm not posting pictures. But at the same time, the All Blacks were facing off against South Africa in South Africa for the Rugby World Cup. Big sporting event for South Africa. It was actually the first international sporting event that they'd held post-apartheid. So we're talking absolutely huge. The majority of New Zealanders still, to this day, believe the All Blacks were poisoned the night before the game, and that's why they lost the game. Now, there is no definitive evidence to say that that happened. There is zero proof to any of the claims that people were in there tampering with their food or anything like that. Like Nothing's ever been found despite all these investigations. Uh, and South Africa had a pretty decent team at the time, to be fair, as well. Um, and it was a very storybook ending to have South Africa win the Rugby World Cup in South Africa for the first time post-apartheid. You had Nelson Mandela there. You had a whole bunch of international dignitaries going, yeah, good on you kind of thing. It was a fairy tale ending for South Africa. And there's still, to this day, the conspiracy theory that the Kiwi team was poisoned the night beforehand, so they couldn't play optimally when they went out onto the field the next day. Now, whether or not you believe this is beside the point. It is still a conspiracy theory, and the majority of Kiwis believe it, oddly enough. And it just sort of goes to highlight for me how easy it is to fall into a conspiracy theory rabbit hole. It doesn't have to be about viruses, and it doesn't have to be pushed by people who at the start of the pandemic were saying things like 5G causes coronavirus, like Brian Tamaki did. Um, but, it, you know, it, it, it can come from pretty much anywhere. Generally speaking, the bigger the event that you feel left out of or that you feel can't be explained by an easy answer, the 
easier it is for conspiracy theories to pull their their feet in and or put their feet in and grab root. And I think that's what we're seeing a lot of today. Um, and like one of the things I have noticed with all of these people who I interact with who spout these conspiracy theories around the virus and and the effects of it, they all tend to have that, you know, groundswell profile pictures or Tamaki pictures or Sue Gray pictures or, you know, the, the hikoi of truth pictures with flags, with Trump rallies and, and the sovereign Maori nations flag and things that really shouldn't mix. Um, it's, I think, something people latch on to because it gives them a sense of direction when they feel lost. And it sort of goes back to my argument about critical thinking a little bit as well, in that I think if we trained people to think critically more often, then there'd be a lot less conspiracy theory footholds coming into play, which is kind of depressing, really, because it means that the education system that we've had in this country for God knows how long has been letting people down, which, to be fair, is not much of a surprise, considering the people I know that have gone through it. There's some very smart people, and there's some very not smart people, and the ones that are not smart lack those critical thinking skills. At the same time, I think people on both sides of the aisle still believe the Kiwis were poisoned in 1995. I mean, that's me. I'm pr that's my processing done. It's more kind of venting and processing and trying to work stuff out. So I hope that this video isn't too long. Um, I would be very keen, though, to hear in the comments whether or not you believe the All Blacks were poisoned in 1995. It'd be great to hear just exactly what people think on that. Look, until next time, have a great day. Enjoy the break. Uh, traffic light system is coming into play soon, so hope you got everything all sorted for that. Cheers.